This is being recorded on Tuesday, the 9th of July, and will most likely be posted this following Saturday. Well, uh, I'm back after a very extended absence. Uh, I have no reason for it, mainly because I forgot I had this channel. <laughs> and also because uh, I'm trying not to post as many videos, uh, as you know, in gearing up for the 100th video spectacular live stream, which will happen sometime next week, and I will post a video informing all of you uh, when it will take place. So, uh, but that's for uh, another time. Anyway, um, welcome to another episode of A Snack and a Story with yours truly, and um, uh, tonight's episode is actually a redo of uh, one that I already recorded uh, a couple weeks back. I was eating something different, and I had uh, dressed a little less formally. Um, I'm dressed this way because I just I got out of work not too long ago, and uh, the reason why I didn't post that was because somebody rang me right in the middle of the recording of it. And I therefore I had to split the thing into two parts, or it was split into two parts, and that made editing a nightmare. I couldn't get the files uploaded and set and downloaded and all that type of thing, so I had to scrap that, and I'm going to start from scratch. Anyhow, so the story is going to be retold from that one. Uh, tonight's meal is uh, one half because this thing's so goddamn big. Uh, of a, it looks a little burnt, but you know, I like it that way, of a, one of those microwavable lasagnas uh, that you could get in your, uh, in market, uh, which are actually pretty good. I only eat half here, as I said, because it's so big. And then to wash it down, got some iced tea here. I drink hot tea, but uh, um, now is not the time nor the uh, place for it. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you uh, the story, um, and uh, yeah, so you can sit here and, as I said, watch me eat, and uh, you know we'll share the story together. And this is all very frivolous and such, and you can probably hear the steam coming off of that. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, but it's like. Really, a lot of steam on that, if you know what I mean. Anyhow, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna let's get right down to it. Mm. So, this story concerns. A boomerang. Now, uh, all my life, at least from early adolescence and boyhood, I've been utterly fascinated, among other things, with boomerangs and their functionality and uh, so forth. So, uh, naturally, uh, I had wanted for several years to have one, but have had... Uh, over the years, these, like, really cheap plastic ones that you can get at, like, uh, the Dollar Tree or Pound Store, whatever, or Pound Shop, whatever, and, uh, they're real flimsy and such, and, you know, you throw it, and the idea is that it was supposed to come back, but, of course, it didn't. Now, uh, this time around, I have no idea how I got it, but, uh, for some reason or other, into my possession had fallen uh, a, a boomerang. But not a toy boomerang. But like a, a wooden... Uh, varnished boomerang 
uh, that had a whole bunch of Aboriginal uh, designs all over it. It had like black kangaroos and even, uh, you know, I want to say like some birds, kookaburras maybe, and uh, even some Aborigine, uh, Aboriginal people on it, all in the uh, traditional Australian uh, Aboriginal uh, mystique, I guess. Anyhow, because it was so heavily ornamented, I thought, you know, it was, it would not really do, well, my parents, I guess, thought that it wasn't really meant for throwing, because, you know, it was, as I said, it's like a collector's piece. But anyway, um, so I just let it sit. Uh, for several years, uh, someplace or other in this room, I don't know where, but somewhere. And, you know, I just say, hey, oh, there's a boomerang there, you know. Uh, I don't throw it because, you know, it's a display piece and I don't want to break it. So, yeah, that's usually how I uh, had treated it, basically just like a, a conversation piece, I guess. Typically, I eat with my, I have my knife in this hand because uh, my right hand's the most adept, and then I eat the, uh, the stuff with uh, this left hand. But since I don't have a knife with me, I'll have to make do and do this. Anyhow, um, then one day my brother comes over. And uh, has a look at this boomerang and says, ah, maybe we ought to toss it back and forth. Have you, have you even tried tossing it? And I said, no, I haven't tried because, you know, I, I figured that, you know, it would break or something. It's a fa it's not a family heirloom, but it's like a, an antique, if you will. Not meant to be played with. And he said, oh, come on, come on, you know, we may as well just, why don't we just toss it around and just see Test its ability. See if it's break. See if uh, it can go far or whatever. That's a lot of steam coming off. I don't think you can even see that. No, you can't. Uh, so we decided to. Uh, uh, you know, I was rather reluctant at uh, having him throw it about, but uh, ultimately we decided to take it to a park. Uh, one day and test its uh, thoroughability, I guess. Uh, So to the park we went, and, uh, you know, it was like a concrete island, basically. I'm sorry about that, I thought somebody was going to stumble in here. Anyway, this park is basically a concrete island, uh, with, uh, How do I say? With uh, uh, greenery on top of it and uh, palm trees, you know, sprouting out of it like uh, candles on a cake and such. And, you know, there's a play structure for the little children to go about and do their business. And then, you know, there were bathrooms and benches and everything. But mainly it was just this green where you could, you know, throw any balls or whatever about and, you know, just have a gay old time. Not that way. Or maybe that way, I don't know. Um, 
So we went here. I don't think we immediately uh, started our practice of throwing it, but we like set up camp at a bench and such. We bivouacked, if you will, at a bench. Or bivouac. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that word, but anyway. Um, we sat there for a couple minutes and figured out how we were going to do this. We just and we come up with a plan, we just toss it back and, f you know, we each toss it and see if it will come back to us. So, my brother is the first up, because he's the oldest, you see. And, you know, he tosses it like so, but it doesn't really come back. It just hears him tossing it. It like does a circle or a circle maneuver and then falls down onto the sod. So it really didn't. <laughs> it's not that effective a boomerang, obviously. So, yeah. So we formulate a plan. To where to where you know one of us throws it and then one of us tries to catch it. It's almost like a game of ball or whatever. We tries to catch it as it comes down. So here we are, you know, throwing it around. You know, I throw it to him. He casually throws back to me and such and all that. We're running all across this concrete island, not thinking uh, about its uh, the possibility of it breaking, whatever. Until we get to the edge of this island. My brother, he brings his arm about that far back and then throws the thing. It, you know, goes soaring off in the air. I try and run and get it. You know, I reach my hands out, I miss it by that much. It hits the curb of the concrete island just right to where it shatters to a thousand pieces. And this is wood, lacquered and such, so I guess it goes to show you that. Uh, Boomerangs don't necessarily come back. They just crash and burn, I guess. And I guess we just tossed it after that. Scrapped it. So yeah. That was my little boomerang story. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm, I'm not done with it. I never finish my news during these. So anyway... Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, snack and story. I'm going to go ahead and finish this. And I will let you know when the 100th video will be live streamed. Because it's going to happen here pretty soon. Anyway, that's all for tonight. So, have a good one.